exit strategies and what happens, worst case scenario, is my money going to be tied up for five or seven years that I can't get to it? Or are you just going to pay an early withdrawal penalty for taking it out early? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That makes a difference. I mean, stuff happens. Uh, life happens. You might have to get your money somehow. If you're in a fund that doesn't allow you to get your money until the project is complete, then you're stuck. Right. <clears throat> if you're in a fund that never ends, an evergreen fund, more than likely you're going to have a early withdrawal penalty uh, for taking it out early, but at least you can get to your money. Yeah. And it may be like a, ours, I think is a two year commitment. Yeah. Some do three years, some just do one. And the thing is that all that we're talking about and there's no right or wrong. Yeah. It's just depending on it's, where you are. It's what works for you and what you have in mind for your financial future. And, and I know we're getting close to uh, the end of time here. Well, not the end of oh, all geez. time, just Man. the end of our time. <laughs> <laughs> But I also, <laughs> wanted, I, I also wanted to just uh, slightly skim the top of uh, your return. Is it based on actual income that's being received or is it based on a future value? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that depends on what you're in. Right. So, so typically if you're in a property type of a fund, it's part of your return is based on a future value. Mm -hmm. And um, we, all we have to do is look at COVID. Uh, if you were in uh, commercial properties that were hospitality, mm -hmm. that future value is not what you thought it was going to be. Yeah. When you started in any kind of, of buildings that had to do with sales, retail sales, that was rough too. Yep. Yeah. Office buildings, everything got reevaluated mm -hmm. um, that had to do with uh, if, if it was in a lockdown and you weren't using it, uh, they were being reevaluated. Now in any other time they're, Probably sure bets, mm -hmm. uh, but is it is it safer to be in something that is there's no guarantee of your return, you but it's but it's income mm -hmm. over time, or is it going to be something that's truly based on what the value of that property is going to be? Right. Like? And what could help you make your determination is uh, using IRR to figure that out. How fast <laughs> right. you can get your capital back? Yeah. And so Jonathan talk about will that. Be doing a <laughs> webinar on the same yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, when, the first Wednesday in November, we yeah. will give you a link as soon as we have one. Yeah. yeah. That'll so, be good. I mean, you know, one of the things when you're evaluating is when, at what point are you mm -hmm. most likely able to get your capital back? Mm -hmm. And the sooner you are able to get your capital back and that once that capital is back and then it switches to cash flow, that is a more favorable uh, vehicle to be in than one that takes longer to get your capital back and then that conversion to cash flow. So, you know, you can look at things and probably know off the top of your head, but you can actually quantify it with an IRR function and say, okay, this one is a X, you know, 50, this one, a 50%, this is a 24%. The difference between the two would be, you know, more than likely that you're getting your capital back in two years as opposed to four. So, you know, two years is probably more favorable than four. And then you have to say, well, what are those two vehicles invested in? All right. Is this 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 four year, you know, secured by assets that will probably not change over time in value? And is this one secured by assets that have historically fl fluctuated up and down? Well, getting your your money back on this one may not outweigh the security of the other one. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. Especially if you're getting that one back on the downside. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. I mean, because it yeah. fluctuates. So it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a fun way to evaluate your deals and you can take that and then you can put it into your portfolio. Um, and let's just say you have 20 different investments and then you have a, a weighted average coupon, which is basically your, your weighted average yield. What is the, the yield that you're getting from each asset. And then you plug this new one in and does it increase or decrease that weighted average coupon? If it increases it, then potentially it's something you would like to add into your portfolio. If it decreases it, then you have to make the determination is the perceived risk or safety perceived safety of that asset worth the diminishing uh, weighted average coupon. 